here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I get to play with a new product and share it with you to see if it's something that you may be considering um, getting or maybe you've just been curious about these. I have been asked by a couple of people to review the uh, Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens. Um, the folks at Hallmark Scrapbook gave these to me to try out and to review on camera and I want to thank them for that. And um, of course, if you have any questions on these versus any other markers, please let me know in the comments below. We're going to compare them against some other ones and we're also going to look at them, um, the color line against some other markers as well. So this is the uh, swatch out I did and you can kind of see how um, you can get a really fine line depending on how uh, much you press on the marker. They are single end ended brush markers and they actually have a real brush and they are not um, a felt tip nib and we're going to look at that a little bit more. So this is the color line in the 24 color pack. Um, I think there's 80 total if you want to invest but I really, you get such a nice range of colors with the 24. I don't think I would get a bigger pack personally. I mean, they're nice to have, but I don't think it's necessary as far as your coloring skills, but you know, that's a decision we all have to make for ourselves. How much we, how many markers we need. Um, so this is just me playing around with these for the first time. I got these in the mail yesterday and I just uh, opened them up to play with them this morning. Now I wanted to compare them with like the uh, Spectrum Aqua markers and um, let's see like right here I have swatched out the uh, Spectrum Aquas and uh, the inks are very similar. I think maybe the Zigs are a little bit purer and brighter but then again I just did these this morning and I did these a couple months ago so it could have just been like a you know how the colors suss out and settle out after a while so you know keep that in mind um and then i've got the winsor newton colors that i have which aren't a ton over here and they have a more earthier palette um but then again they are watercolor pigments and they are light fast so um sometimes you have to make a trade when you're getting a marker like that you're going for a higher quality that's not going to fade um but you don't have the more intense colors and um i did not find any information about light fast ratings on the Zig Real Brush Pens. They may be light fast, but generally with like a really vivid dye based ink, they're not. Um, so, you know, just consider that whenever you're deciding what markers you want to go with. Okay, so I did kind of just scribble out some colors here. And um, this was the Real Brush Pen in green. Let me just get that out there so you can see. Now, if I, um, let me zoom in a little bit. I'm just going to go right next to these swatches that I made just to, I guess, hopefully not have any confusion. So if I use like the tip of this pen straight up and down, I can get a really fine, oops, you can't even see that. Yeah, I got a really fine line there. Now if I press, I can get a wider line and there's still quite a bit of control. I think this might be nice if someone likes to do brush lettering. That's not something I am skilled at, um, but it's definitely, you know, it would be good for that. Oh, and I just want to show you that the, how fine that is, but also if I like, if I press against there, you can see all the individual little hairs See, this is an actual brush. So that's the only marker pen that has an actual brush. Um, so it's probably very similar to your Rink of Stella's, which is also a Zig product, I believe. Um, but you obviously don't have the sparkle in there. So just to, if you want to compare it to something else, I don't have any of the Wink of Stella's, so I can't um, show you side by side with that. Uh, but I just wanted to let you know. So the Spectrum Aquas have, are also a brush marker pen that's been very popular. So this is what the brush looks here. And if I show you in comparison, there's quite a bit of difference in size. And um, I really can't get a fine line. That's probably about as fine as I can get. And the bristles, do, the ends do fray a little bit, especially if it's a color you use a lot. This is a color I use a lot and I use it to color up my rubber stamps to stamp with. So it does get a little bit of um, use and abuse. So let, and then, you know, that's what you get for a wide line. Pretty so you can get about the same wide line with either of those, but then um, you do have the option with this of having the double end and having that fine line there. So, you know, I can just kind of scribble in there and um, I can also get that a line that is as fine as the um, the Zig Real, Real Color. Is that what it's called? Clean Color. I'm going to keep calling it Real Color. It's Clean Color. Um, you know, so if you already have these markers, the Spectrum Aquas, you probably don't necessarily need these, you know, but it's I just want to give you this information so you can decide what is best for you. And in fact, you can get 48 of the Spectrum Aquas for about the, si the same price as 24 of the um, real color. Is that clean color? Goodness gracious. Is You know, so they're about half as cheap. So, you know, weigh those options before you decide. Um, and then I wanted to kind of compare a few of these because I know a lot of you guys have these markers, have other markers already, and you're curious whether you need another marker. Um, I will say that the I really like these real brush 
clean color markers. You know, I've been playing with them for a couple hours. Um, but you know, if you already have water-based markers, you might not need them. They may not, you know, it just depends on what you want to do. So this is a memento and I like the memento markers. Cause again, you have the brush, which is a little bit smaller than the spectrum aqua, but not as small as the, um, clean colors. And you have the hard nib that's plastic on the other side, but these do not lift up as well with water. So if you wanted to do watercolor effects, you'd really want to scribble these out on like a tile or a plate and then lift it up with a wet brush because they're not going to be very liftable once you, um, once you go over it with a wet brush, I'll show you in a second. Now we've got the Distress, um, which they're very reactive, but I have problems with these markers leaking and or getting dry. And I don't know if I got a bad batch or what, but um, I have had, I, I, these would be my least recommended ones. And I know some of you guys are just crazy about the Tim Holtz markers, but I find them to give me more problems than other brands. Um, now this next one over here um, is the Letra Set Aqua Marker. And some people had asked me about these. So you have a bullet tip on one end and you have a bigger bullet tip. So it's not a brush, it's a bigger bullet tip. Although they may have, I got these a few years ago. They may have a brush end for the Aqua Markers now. I'm not 100% sure. Please let me know in the comments below if you know for sure. And then the uh, Windsor Newton also has a bullet tip very much like the, the Aqua Marker. In fact, I found those two to be very similar to one another um, with the exception that this has a brush tip. And I think, and I know this is real watercolor and it has light fastness ratings. Like this is a light fastness of one with a permanent of A, which is very permanent. So I just wanted to um, you know, let you know, because this does have light fast ratings while, where other markers don't. But then again, this is also a very limited palette, probably because it's hard to find colors that are not going to be fugitive in a marker form. So, you know, you, tra you have trade-offs. No matter what quality you're looking for, there's going to be, to get one particular quality, you're going to be trading off and losing another quality. So it's just something to be aware of so that you pick out the markers that are going to suit you the best. Um, and then I've got the La Plumes, which are um, been around probably more than anything. These, okay, these are probably like the least. Um, they've I seem to be, I seem to get like dry, new La Plumes and they end up being dry and I'm not sure where, why, but it's been in packages and open stock. I've just found those not to be consistent in quality either. And then these Whispers, which are probably a pretty good deal. They're kind of hard to find now. I got these at my local AC Moore a few years ago. I don't think they sell them anymore, but, um, but I know some of you guys have them. So I just wanted to swatch them out here just so that you can see if what you have will do the same thing. So if I go through with my water, um, here on the Zig Clean Color pens, I can almost lift up all of that marker. Okay, very, very water soluble. And then here, if I go next door to the Spectrum Aquas, they also lift almost all the way up. So either of those are gonna give me very similar results. Um, and if you already have the Spectrum Aquas, then you're all set. Um, if you're trying, trying to decide between the two, the Zigs have a, have a much finer brush point and um, you know, that might be more what you want because it, it, it's not gonna fray as much. But then again, if you wanna ink up rubber stamps, you're better off with the Spectrum Aquas. If you want to color and paint and um, not ink up rubber stamps, probably the Zigs are gonna be better because they have the actual brush in there and you can blend between colors just using that brush or with a water brush. So, you know, everybody's gonna have different needs. So this next one here, um, this was a Memento, which does not lift up. And I think a lot of the green there was already on my brush. And that's, um, that's almost permanent. I mean, it's a water-based marker, but it's almost permanent once you put it down, you can layer over it. So that may be a quality that you want. Um, this next one is a Tim Holtz Distress. They lift up very well. Um, and maybe other people haven't had the issues that I have had with these markers. Maybe I was an early adopter and, you know, just kind of got some bad ones, but didn't really want to make me get any more after that. Um, here we have the Letra set and they lift up pretty well, moderately. They don't, you know, I guess they lift up a lot better from the brush end if I, than the, the bullet end or the wider bullet end rather. Um, you know, they're, they're okay. And the Windsor Newton ones lift up excellently. I really like those, but they are expensive and they have a limited color range. And then here we have the La Plumes, which actually lift up pretty decent. And I noticed like a lot of the markers that came out um, before like the uh, Tim Holtz Distress markers, the liftability wasn't really an issue. People didn't really seem to care about that very much. And then the Whispers lift up quite nicely. 
Um, so I just wanted to give you that uh, information there so that if you have markers already and you're trying to decide, what well, should I get, Lindsay? Do I need these? I already have some of these. You know, is this going to do what I want? I want you to be informed because, um, you know, there are so many products out there that will do similar things. I am enjoying these Zig markers. I think they're excellent quality, but if you already have Spectrum Aquas, you probably don't need them. Um, so, you know, I just want to, I just want to give you guys an honest, um, honest opinion. Because when something comes new comes out, it's so exciting and we all, you know, want to try it out and we love it. And then it can feel like we don't, if we don't have these things, then, then we, you know, we can't make art. And that's absolutely not true. All right. So what I'm going to do is I've, I've stamped out these, uh, three butterflies. And these are those ones I used last weekend that sold out. I'm sorry, guys. Um, they're the Alta New Butterflies, but, um, these are from Hallmark Scrapbook. I just keep your eyes peeled. If you see them, then, you know, you might want to grab them if they come back in stock. But I'm going to grab a few colors here, and we're going to do some blending. And I think I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see the butterflies better. I'm going to start with this red. This is um, Carmine Red. Now, I recommend whenever you get, like, a set of markers that you swatch them out because that's really going to help you get to know the markers without, you know, and kind of help break your fear over you know, we're using something for the first time. Then I'm going to go ahead and use some of this yellow here in the middle. Now I could actually go right in, in between, and look, I can blend those together really easily. Much easier than trying to do that with a, um, like a Copic marker or an alcohol marker. Look at that. Blends so nice. I'm going to have a lot of fun coloring with these. Um, so I can blend that out quite a bit. And then to clean my brush, I can either keep coloring it out until it, I don't see any more red, or I could just scribble it off on a piece of paper. And again, you know, these are super, super fine brushes, and they're really high quality, and that's why they're a little bit more expensive than some of the other brands. And I can go in with this lighter yellow. Again, I can kind of blend the colors a little bit, but I'll probably end up using water, mostly for that one. So we'll do a three color blend here. And I'm working on um, hot press watercolor paper. So if you're working on a cardstock, you may not get uh, quite a nice blend. Oh, there we go. So I can really, uh, really smooth out those colors with a little bit of water. Um, and if you don't want to use a water brush, you can use a blender pen, like a water-based blender pen, like um, a Dove blender or a Stampin' Up clear blender pen. Um, Let's see, I, I like the Stampin' Up one. I like Tombow Blender Pen really well too. So there we got a really nice blend there with three colors. Now let's try it with two colors, putting some right here and some over there. And let's go with a different color. And just I'm just gonna wipe off my water brush just to clean off the tip. Okay, let's try, um, purples are usually kind of hard to blend. So let's try some like purple and blue. And um, let's try this darker purple and this lighter blue. I got a cobalt blue and I've got um, violet. And I think I'll do the violet here and towards the center. These are actually, this would be kind of pretty on a card, wouldn't it? Just to cut these out or, or what have you. I find the more water-based markers I use, um, the more I'm preferring them to my alcohol markers. I, I think because it's quicker and I tend to have less time these days. And so I really want my... Um, I really want my crafting time to be spent, you know, productively, and I want to have fun with it. So let's just wet the blue. I'm going to do the blue areas first, and then scooch over to the, uh, scooch over to the purple. Ooh, look at that nice blend. I mean, such a lovely fade. Can you see that? It's kind of glaring because of the lights, but you get a really nice fade there. And then I'm going to go over here. I'm going to try to liquefy all the purple first, so I don't end up with a hard edge. And then I'm just going to bring it over. And I'll, I'll move it again for you so you don't have to see it in the glare. That's blending quite nicely, especially because purple is one of the toughest colors to blend. Purple and red, um, those colors just tend to really want to stain the paper. And that's why I wanted to do these. That's why I wanted to use these colors so we can really give it a good test to see how well they're going to blend. And I haven't had a lot of practice time. Like I said, I just was playing with these today. Um, I got them in the mail yesterday. So there we go. We have two colors there. It's like psychedelic. looks like a Grateful Dead t-shirt. I have a tie-dye t-shirt that looks kind of like that, actually. Um, and then let's do this one. Let's pick a couple others. Um, let's see. Maybe use like maybe green and yellow. Like that would be pretty. Let's try that. Or actually, let's do green and another blue. We'll give that a whirl. OK. 
Okay, I don't think you really see green but butterflies. Well, like lunar moths are, are green. Oh, and it is weekend. I'm, I'm recording this on Sunday morning, so you're bound to hear some crazy noises just because, you know, the water pump might go on and I can hear kids singing upstairs. And um, yeah, someone's calling my name right now. And we're going to blend these two colors together. Make sure my, I get a clean. I'm going to clean my brush off right here on the side of this paper. And just kind of blend everything across. This is that same green we were using um, in the demo there. I'm just going to do this real quick because I can hear that I am needed elsewhere in the home. Sorry. That's all right. All right. So there you go. You can see the uh, lovely blends you can get. I like the blue and green one. You do? Yeah, that's kind of pretty. I, didn't, I kind of rushed that one a little bit. All right. And I want to show you just kind of um, using the pens. Um, I'm not good at brush lettering, but you know, you can get a really fine line or a thick line because you are, you have the bristles, you're not hurting anything by, you know, pressing them like that, but you know, you can get a really good amount of detail with them. Um, so if you want to check these out, I'm going to put a link below to Hallmark Scrapbook, where I got mine from. And um, if you do make a purchase using my link, I do receive a small portion of the sale. Just want to let you know that. Um, I also want to let you know about my sponsor this month, who is uh, Renee Christine at richmombusiness.com. She's uh, one of my friends and also a fantastic um, resource for helping you build your craft business online. So if you've been considering selling your crafts online, check out her free three video handmade training course at freehandmadetraining.com. Also, there'll be a link in the video description for that as well. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions on these markers, leave them in the comments below and I will try to help you out. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.